moving ahead so here we are going to discuss how it is advant uh, advantages to the company to issue uh, the uh, preference shares so preference shares uh, is something which is used by the big corporates as a long term source of funding their projects uh, they are known as a hybrid financing instrument which carry uh, characteristics of both equity and the debt so advantages uh, of issuing preference shares to the uh, company like no legal obligation for dividend payment like uh, we already discussed uh, whenever the company has sufficient profits other than in case of cumulative preference shares then only it has uh, it can declare dividend on the uh, preference shares but then there is more danger hmm. of giving voting rights no if they don't give for 2 years yeah exactly that is a point over here like if they do not declare dividend for 2 years then the preference shareholders get voting rights on all the matters of the company uh improves borrowing capacity but uh, already we discussed earlier that uh, as a, if we take conservative view then uh, we do not have to uh, include preference shares in the paid up share capital of the company uh, so this point is also uh, open for interpretation I, i this is what i feel because if we if we consider as per companies act it forms a part of paid up share capital and if it con we consider it as a paid up share capital then the borrowing capacity of the company increases because it contributes to the net worth of the company however if we take under conservative view and do not uh, include it under the paid up share capital then this is uh, a disadvantage i can say so no dilution in control because preference shareholders do not have voting rights in the management decisions so there is no dilution in control no charge on assets uh, they do not have any charge on assets of the company so these are the advantages and disadvantages to the company is costly source of finance so because preference shareholders carry a fixed rate of dividend uh, uh, it is a it is something that the company has to pay dividend to the preference shareholders and skipping dividends uh, in, in on the preference shareholders the then the company's market image may uh, may uh, go down or even if the even if the dividend is not declared they get voting rights and then that is also a, a disadvantage to the company preference in claims so whenever uh, at the time of winding up and all uh, the they have a preference in all claims and the dividend so they has to be considered first before uh, uh, any dividend and the repayment is considered for equity shareholders one so, minute yeah, yeah. just my question that when this company think of issuing preferences that this is the right mode of raising fund when they look at the preferences good question good question because you see the if the preference dividend is not declared then for all purposes of law the equity the preference shareholder is treated on par with the equity shareholder so he should be cons they should be considered as part of quorum although they are not equity holders they have the rights of equity holders and therefore they should be considered as part of quorum so uh, uh, you know that's why again see two things it does not give them advantage also of increasing borrowing power and all that so as a share capital so why can't i issue as a debt now in debt equity ratio also this will be considered as debt only so because if, because in the debt again what happens is uh, the whether you will be able to issue the unsecured debt or secured debt would be in case of the preference security is not there sorry can you come again in case of the debt uh, uh, because uh, generally people wants to have a security against the debt Okay, because if you if you even just there is a certain things like you bought the division trustees appointed, all those things are there because it is difficult to get a debt without the security. But in case of the preference share capital, no such security is required. Yeah. So, but I can if preferences are from the public or any known people, then instead of so it can be unsecured debt also. Instead of preference share. I'll take at the same rate loan. Yeah, if you are able to get the unsecured loan, yes, your point is valid. The preference is the unsecured loan only, no? But generally, generally, people uh, ask for the security. 
Ah, that's why. So who can be the preference share owner? That was my second question later on. Then who will invest in preference shares? Unless the people know. Because, of course, we are taking listing and all that differently. But I had this question. That if I know that this shareholders will invest in preference shares where they don't get dividend right or anything, uh, or sorry, voting rights, they get fixed rate and no other rights. Except that, of course, uh, as Sir mentioned, that issue of uh, notice and receipt of notice. So it is like a debt only, no? See, thing is, Tell you when the people want to invest a preference share, they are probably looking, you know, a sort of a fixed income. So they will select such a company where, you know, the people that does not take place, their fixed income comes and also at a certain period of time, they would like to get the money back. That is the way they will look. Those people only will invest for preference mm -hmm. Well, secondly, Dipti, there are tax issues in this because uh, if somebody, if, if a company issues a preference capital, so first I have to earn profit, pay the tax, then declare dividend. And nowadays on dividend, again, the investor again pays the tax. So it is a double tax uh, kind of a thing. So assuming my purpose is only to borrow and if I'm eligible for uh, borrowing both by way of preference and equity uh, and debt, then I would prefer to have a debt because whatever I pay, I get as a deduction from my profit. Exactly, I was coming that thing. That yeah. why I will prefer so one of the important consideration nowadays. No, I, I, I'll explain this that uh, you know when you issue debt capital uh, uh, which is not uh, which doesn't have any uh, constituent of capital the your cost of capital post tax is much lower because the interest paid is deductible in the hands of the company on the other hand when you issue preference capital you do not consider the preference capital uh, uh, the preference dividend as a charge on the profit it is only an appropriation of profit so uh, the cost of capital is higher in the case of preference shares. Now, where it comes to calculation of debt equity, etc., yes, indeed, the preference uh, capital is considered as part of uh, debt. But, uh, you know, uh, if you want to uh, argue out that uh, since that preference capital has a, 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 you know, a tenor of, let's say, 30 years in the case of uh, uh, infrastructure companies, then you can always argue out with the financial analyst and say that this is not my borrowing uh, for, uh, you know, in the near future, given that I have to redeem after 30 years. So therefore, I can always say that this should not be considered for the purposes of debt equity. So of course, it's how you argue out your case. I mean, and what purpose are these financial uh, ratios being calculated? Okay. I agree with Kalidas ji. Then in various uh, tender cases also where there are requirement your minimum net worth ah. the purposes. So yeah. preference was part of capital. So that's a cost you pay so that you get eligible for the tender purposes if that is one of your purposes. So then you don't mind paying little uh, higher outgo by way of taxes, etc. Okay. So bank is do not consider as a share capital, but the companies or government PSU or as such for tender purpose considered as a share capital. My experience, I think 10, 15 years back, even preference capital was considered as a capital by the bankers. Okay. So, but at least we can say for tender purpose, sure, it is positive that they are taking as a share capital and part of net worth, and so you become eligible. So, I incur little higher cost, assuming that, no, as Kalidasi rightly said, that uh, if, if I uh, take it as a debt, then whatever interest I pay is fully deductible. So, I save a tax. <clears throat> Whereas uh, debt or equity, in either case, the investor has to pay the tax. I mean, two years back, it was a different that on dividend, I pay the tax, yeah. so it is tax free. So in those times, uh, a lot of companies have and even investors would prefer to have it uh, by way of yeah. a preference. At least I get a tax free. I don't have that hassle of paying advance. Right. Right. But now it is not. Now the situation again is back to the square one. Mm -hmm. Whether the preferred shareholder has the right to approach the NCFT. We have taken in a subsequent slide. NCFT. Yeah, it's there. It is there. It is there. Yeah. So we will take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You are such yeah. A yeah. So, ma'am, uh, can we uh, consider this paid as share capital debt point is open for interpretation as per law? Like how we interpret the act and the definitions yeah, accordingly? It's very confusing. Uh, honestly, at one part, 
it is part of share capital, but otherwise it's like, you know, when in old 1956 act, dimmed public company, mm -hmm. it's like a dimmed share and dimmed debt kind of thing. It is not one part, it is dimmed share one part and dimmed debt another part. So honestly, that's why in this topic we are arguing so much because it is not easy topic. It's a complex issue. Yeah. And it depends on the facts, circumstances, each time how it will be treated. Right, panel, you can answer Suchita's uh, observation. Suchita, there are uh, various other ramifications of a preference shares on which dividend is not paid. Now, as in my earlier, I was giving an example that my you know, equity is 1 lakh, but I have a 1 crore of preference capital. Hmm. And let's say some private limited he is holding and uh, uh, <coughs> the company which has issued is a public company. Now what happens uh, just because of non-payment and assuming I am holding 60% will become a subsidiary suddenly. And you know the current 2013 company <coughs> left, then I will fall into compulsory consolidation. Now one year I do consolidation, yeah. next year's company has paid a dividend, it ceased to be my subsidiary. So again I don't consolidate, I don't know. <laughs> what could be on and off happening because of uh, this legality and like that way a dim public company will happen not happen because you become a holding company of a public company so all those issues uh, will crop up yeah and so that's why i say as a cs when preferences is there in a balance sheet be careful what all implication can come we are discussing please see that how it is important that we should keep eye on the preferences Okay, Sujika. Okay. Uh, so moving ahead on the next slide, the conditions for issuing preference shares. So first we have to check the authorized share capital of the company, whether he ha it has preferential uh, preference shares uh, capital in that or not. Like we have to reclassify it or increase the authorized share capital so that it accommodates the preference share capital also. Uh, check for the enabling provisions in the articles of association, whether AOA authorizes the issue of preference shares or not. If not, then we have to alter the articles of association first. Uh, no default in the redemption of already issued preference shares. So if the company is in default of redemption of already issued preference shares, then it cannot issue further preference shares until that default is uh, made good. Uh, no default in the payment of dividends. There should not be any default in the payment of dividend on the earlier issued preference shares. Uh, if the company plans to issue further uh, preference shares, then tenure of preference shares. Uh, the tenure of preference shares that has to be taken into account that the company cannot issue preference shares for more than 20 years, except in case of infrastructure projects, whether it is 30 years. So that has to be taken care of before the company plans issuing of any preference shares. Uh, then here we are going to explain procedure for issuing preference shares. Uh, see, we all must be aware of this and uh, still I'm going to explain in brief the, what is the procedure of issuing preference shares. Calling for a board meeting by going, giving a notice of seven days, uh, we have to call a board meeting wherein we will discuss the uh, uh, issue of preference shares, then its terms and conditions, then notice of general meeting we will uh, consider over uh, in, in that. Uh, which will contain the uh, expiratory statement. I'm going to explain what, uh, what, what is covered in expiratory statement in the later slide. Then convening a general meeting for issuance of preference shares wherein we'll get the approval of shareholders. Uh, then filing of form MGT-14. We have to file form MGT-14 since it's a special resolution for issuing preference shares. And in case of private investment, uh, we have to circulate the offer letter to the shareholders. However, before filing of MGT-14, we cannot circulate the offer to the shareholders. Immediately after filing MD14, we can circulate the uh, private placement offer letter this past four at uh, as per the company's act. Uh, after circulation of offer letter, the company will receive share application money from the shareholders. Uh, in case of private placement, this application money has to be kept in a separate bank account, which is opened by the company, especially for the private placement, receiving the money in case of private placement. And the company has to allot the securities within 60 days of receipt of uh, application money. And accordingly, within the 60 days, the company has to hold another board meeting for allotment of uh, uh, preference shares. After allotment, uh, within in case of private placement, within 15 days, the company has to file uh, form pass three, which is return of allotment. Uh, and before filing of pass three, the money uh, which is raised for under this uh, for the shares of preference shares cannot be utilized by the company as per the provisions of section 42. So after holding the board meeting and allotment of shares, the company has to file pass three, then issue share certificates to the shareholders. Uh, 
specifically uh, uh, which, which specifically states the uh, fixed rate of dividend which is there in the uh, on the preference shares then making relevant entries in the register of members within seven days from the uh, for holding the board meeting the company has to enter in the register of members the name of preference shareholders to whom the shares are issued <clears throat> so this is a brief procedure and these yeah. are the things or oh, there is yes, okay finish the explanatory statement then i will take the question yeah okay so these are the uh, mandatory disclosures in the expiratory statement which we have to disclose while issuing preference shareholders the size of issue and the number of preference shares to be issued and nominal value of each the is the share the nature of such shares that is cumulative non cumulative participating non participating convertible non convertible the types we have uh, discussed earlier so that has to be disclosed in the expiratory statement what is the type of preference shares uh, the manner of issue of such shares uh, the price at which such shares are proposed to be issued based on the valuation report we must have decided on the price so that price has to be disclosed the basis on which the price has been arrived at the valuation the valuation report which we have obtained uh, on that we have to explain the basis on which the price has been arrived at then terms of issue including terms rate of dividend uh, etc so the terms of issue are specifically decided by the company the rate of dividend and everything so that has to be disclosed in the expiratory statement the terms of redemption also including the tenure of redemption the redemption of shares at premium uh, that everything has to be disclosed if the preference shares are convertible then the terms of conversion uh, the company has to decide and that has to be disclosed in the expiratory statement uh, the manner and modes of redemption so there are modes of redemption we are going to cover in the uh, uh, later side of the presentation so that that time i will explain the modes of redemption the current share holding pattern of the company is also needs to be disclosed in the expiratory statement expected dilution in equity shares capital upon conversion of preference shares in case the con uh, preference shares are in convertible nature then a dilution of uh, equity share capital also has to be disclosed in the expiratory statement so these are the point which are uh, mandatorily required to be disclosed in the expiratory statement in case of issue of preferences uh, yes ma'am you wanted to yeah there was a question so can uh, e existing unissued equity shares in the authorized share capital be reclassified into requisite number of preference shares panel yeah i i'll answer this uh... Yes, you for that uh, I think you need to amend your authorized capital clause because the authorized capital has a component which is uh, not uh, consisting of preference shares. So if the unissued uh, equity shares have to be issued as preference shares, firstly you need to amend the authorized capital clause uh, to make the unissued share capital unissued equity as uh, preference capital. And once you do that, thereafter you can. Yeah. Okay, next question from Mr. Virendra Verma. Can default in payment of declared dividend on equity shares can be a point of disqualification of preference shares issue? No. A dividend declared is declared on equity shares, but it is not paid. Whether the said company can issue preference shares, that is the question. Uh, I'm not sure. Is there a requirement that it should be uh, in the issue of preference? So your voice is. Shares, is there? What I'm saying is that. You, you are on mute, sir. Yeah. No, no. His voice is. Is there a requirement? Is there a requirement when you issue preference shares? Hmm. I think that kind of requirement is not there, Suchita, right? No, I think we have to only consider dividend on preference shares, the earlier issued preference shares. Are yes. you required to have an uninterrupted uh, uh, track record of equity dividend for preference shares? I don't think so. Uh, no. The same thing, but very interesting point that they have, uh, that the company, even though declared dividend and has defaulted, and now coming out with preferences which carry fixed rate of dividend payable. Yeah, yes, your point is correct, but I think there is no prohibition. Yeah. It will be dealt separately. The default will be dealt separately. An issue of preferences, yes, you can do as a company. Interesting question, Mr. Viren. Okay, thanks.
So Chita, go ahead. Yeah. So here we are going to discuss listing of preference shares and the regulation which are uh, which covers the listing of preference shares. So there are uh, following two regulations issued by SEB which governs the issue and listing of preference shares. That is Securities and Exchange Board of India issue of capital and disclosure requirement regulation which is applicable to convertible uh, securities like convertible preference shares. So this regulation shall apply to the following that is public issue, uh, then rights issue where the aggregate value of specified securities so, offered uh, is. One minute. Yes. So sir. it says this applicable to convertible securities only. Means yes. only the convertible preference shares can only be listed. No, no. We I am covering the second regulation wherein non-convertible are also uh, can okay. be listed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this regulation applies to public issue then rights issue where the aggregate value of specified securities offered is 50 crore rupees or more uh, a preferential issue uh, which covers private placement of equity uh, preferential share preference shares then issue of bonus shares by the listed issuer and qualified institution placement by the listed issuer so for all these uh, issues uh, this regulations are applicable uh, then secondly, uh, this is what ma'am you're talking about. That is Securities and Exchange Board of India issue and listing of non-convertible securities regulation. So these are applicable to non-convertible preference shares. Uh, public issue of non-convertible preference shares, then listing of privately placed uh, redeemable preference shares, which are non-convertible in nature. Uh, however, uh, I just wanted to uh, just wanted to throw a light on the amended definition of uh, list, listed company under uh, the uh, Companies Act. Wherein it is stated that if a company has listed its preference shares or debentures, then the company shall not be considered as a listed company. If it is only if it is only if it has only listed its preference shares and the debentures, then it will not come, come under the definition of listed company as per the amended rules. So there are many conditions and uh, procedural formalities are involved in these two regulations, which we are not going into detail in the presentation. So normally these two regulations cover the listing of preference shares. Then we are coming into rights of preference shares, preference shareholders. Hey, uh, Suchita, uh, yes, uh, how many companies have listed preference shares? Uh, so, there, ma'am, there are many companies. Uh, however, I can uh, name one that is ILFS Transportation Networks Limited, which has listed its preference shares uh, on the Bombay Stock Exchange. Okay. So, there are okay. many such companies which has listed their preference shares also, along with the equity shares. Okay. So rights of preference shareholders, so voting rights, uh, the preference shareholders have voting rights uh, the, on any resolution placed before the company which directly affects their rights uh, attached to their preference shares and any resolution for the winding up of the company or on the payment, repayment or reduction of its equity and preference share capital. Uh, if, if at all the dividend uh, is not paid for two years or more on the preference shares, then they get a right to vote on all the matters of the company. So uh, as for the uh, section 47, uh, private companies have, then, uh, have that exemption, like they, uh, if their article so permit, they can issue preference shares without voting rights or with voting rights. Uh, as we said, uh, in case of privately placed, uh, private placement of preference shares, uh, they, there is a shareholders agreement between the uh, issuer and the uh, preference shareholders. So they give right to the preference shares to vote on all matters of the company. So that that is that exemption is applicable to the private companies that they can issue preferences with such uh, voting rights also or without voting rights also. Then secondly, here, uh, sorry, here it yeah. comes the uh, you know where and who can be preferential or why company will issue yeah. the structuring this way in case of private anymore. Yeah. Yes. Then uh, right to receive notice of general meetings. So person to section 101 subsection 3, the notice of meeting should be given to every member of the company, their legal representatives or a, of any deceased member or the assignee or an in, of an insolvent member. So definition of member as per section 2 subsection 55 is any person who holds shares in the company and whose name is entered in the register of members of the company. Uh, so since preference shareholder will, will be, will, there is no distinction between equity and preference shareholders in case of members uh, as per the definition given. So preference shareholders are also members of the company. So they are entitled to receive uh, the notice of uh, general meetings and also participate in the general meetings. However, their voting rights are restricted only on the matters as, state, as I explained above in the voting rights, where their rights are getting directly affected. 
so uh, so this is a uh, general question that um, many times we uh, that this question comes into our mind whether notice of all general meeting has to be given to the preference shareholders so yes they they are the members of the company and as per the provisions of act we have to give them a uh, notice of all the general meetings and they they also have a right to attend the general meetings and uh, but voting rights are restricted only to the uh, their matters as mr college has said in the opening yeah. remarks initially when he was uh, talking about the topic he said uh, as uh, way back in 1977 yes. itself, the department of company affairs uh, clarified that the preferred shareholders of the company need to be sent the notice that he said in the beginning Yes, yes, that we have discussed in the starting of the presentation also. Yeah. So here we are going to discuss uh, dividend on preference shares. So sorry. So preference shares carry a preferential right as to dividend in accordance with the terms of issue. They have fixed uh, rate uh, decided at the time of issue, and of according to that, they have to uh, they get that preferential right for uh, payment of dividend. This right is not to receipt of dividend, but to preferential treatment if and when the dividend is declared by the company. Uh, since preferential holders have a fixed return uh, rate of return, you cannot pay interim dividend. Like preferential holders, dividend is already the rate is already decided uh, at the time of issue, and only that upon based on that rate we have to uh, pay dividend to the preferential holders. So and they are not entitled to interim dividend unless the preferential holders are participating in it. participating in nature so if the preference shareholders are participating they are they are eligible to participate in the surplus profits of the company and in that case the company can pay interim dividend to preference shareholders also since dividend on preference shares is governed by the terms of issue already approved uh, by the shareholders the board may declare on uh, such dividend in accordance with the terms of issue however uh, as kalidas sir has explained at the starting uh, the ordinary business in the agm notice covers payment declaration and payment of dividend so it it does not uh, gives any classification of whether it is a equity dividend preference shareholders dividend and uh, hence uh, approval of shareholders is also required for declaration of dividend of preference shares as an ordinary resolution Uh, as we already discussed, if dividend is not paid for two years, then preference shareholders have right to vote on all the matters of the company. However, as per Companies Act 1956, the earlier Act, only cumulative and non-cumulative preference shareholders gets voting right in case the dividend is not paid for two years. Uh, Kalida, sir, would you like to explain something in this matter? The uh, act difference between old act and new right in yeah, case of it, no, the present act takes away the difference between the various categories of uh, preference shares. It clearly says that if dividend is not paid for two years, uh, the preference shareholder will get uh, step into the shoes of the equity shareholder in terms of exercise of voting rights. However, I reiterate that the he continues to remain an, a preference shareholder. He does not become an equity shareholder. it is only for the limited purposes of exercising his voting rights that he can he will be treated like any other yes okay. and under old act it was only for cumulative yeah and the old the old act uh, there was a, you know the, because the cumulative you know you had to actually even if you didn't pay the dividend on cumulative you had to book a, you had to make a provision in the books under the old act of course uh, now all that is not necessary so therefore the old act was uh, you know a little more lenient to the company but now uh, there is no question of any leniency and the voting rights get available to the preference shareholder once there is <coughs> failure to pay preference dividend for two years but uh, dipti i think that failure to pay is consecutive two years it should have remained unpaid sorry Okay. Is that consecutive two years? You, uh, I mean, dividend should remain unpaid. Consecutive, yeah. You can add. No, it is consecutive. Consecutive. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, uh, it's not paid for two years. Consecutive, ah. Huh? Consecutive two years. Last, last. Yeah. Uh, Switch it at that last. Like, yeah. Point. <coughs> two consecutive years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, ma'am, I wanted some opinion from you. Uh, as the secretary standard says uh, that the uh, on a, which is SS three, which is not mandatory as of now, there is right to receive dividend. Uh, this right to the this right is not to receive of dividend, but to preferential treatment if and when the dividend uh, the dividend is declared by the company, because preferential holders get dividend out of the uh, profit after tax. 
so if the company uh, do not have profit in a particular year and it does not declare dividend on preference shares for this so it goes for two consecutive years then also the right to vote comes into picture the right to vote on all matters uh, ma'am you are on mute it will come right panel uh, it is like that whether you the if preference shareholder don't receive dividend whatever may be the reason Whether mm -hmm. preference shareholder, preference share is cumulative, non-cumulative. Simple thing. Any preference shareholder don't receive dividend for consecutive two years, he or she will entitled to the voting rights on all the matter. Right, panel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you're right. Absolutely right. Even if the dividend is not declared yeah, in case yeah, of yeah, the net yeah. profits. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ma that is the danger. So I was talking. No, that. Yes. The company has that, not. That is uh, that is what the new that is what the new act is more more stringent in favor of the shareholders, no? Yeah. Ah uh, yes, okay. So shall I move ahead with the yeah, next? Yeah. 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 so we are coming into redemption of preference shares so here are some here are some modes for redemption of preference shares that is by fresh issue of shares a company can come up with a fresh issue especially for the redemption of uh, uh, existing uh, to redeem the existing uh, issued preference shares or out of profits available for dividend the profit which is available for payment of dividend uh, from that the company can redeem preference shares or out of combination of both Uh, in case of free issue, the company has to specifically mention that this issue is uh, specifically uh, to cover the redemption of preference shares. So these are the modes of redemption of preference shares. Condition conditions for redemption of preference shares. So the conditions are the shares to be redeemed must be fully paid up. Partly paid up uh, shares cannot be uh, as not eligible for redemption. Uh, redemption can be affected only out of profits of the company. then premium pay if any which is payable on redemption shall be provided out of company security premium account or out of profits of the company uh, redemption is if the redemption is out of the proceeds of fresh issue of shares then the issue shall have been made specifically for the purpose of redemption that the company has to disclose it specifically while issuing the uh, fresh shares that it is specifically for covering the redemption of uh, preference shares uh, if redemption is out of distributed one, profits one question one question here one yes, question sir. here yes sir one question here on the on the fresh issue can you hear me yes yes sir yeah one question here on the fresh issue of capital mm -hmm. make a issue i think the issue of fresh capital has to be for substitute for redeeming the preference capital so question is that can you make a fresh issue of redeem uh, uh, from shares for uh, redeem redeeming redeeming the old preference or has it to be an issue of equity shares is the law saying that it has to be a issue of fresh equity of fresh issue of equity shares or it can be a fresh equity of preference shares for redeeming the old preference shares it could be either or combination of both yes sir because uh, there are no specific uh, like uh, The by law has not bifurcated whether it has to be equity share or preference shares, and hence they are uh, putting a condition that while issuing the uh, fresh issue, while doing this fresh issue, we have to specifically mention it that it is for redemption of the existing preference shares, and hence I think we can issue, uh, we can do it by issuing further redeemable preference shares also. Yeah, then then I suggest you add that in the slide. The shares, uh, the fresh issue can be uh, uh, of both, both either equity or preference. Equity. You can say equity and preference. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. Uh, so if the redemption is out of distributable profits, that is out of profit which is available for distribution of dividend, then the uh, amount equivalent to nominal amount of shares which needs to be redeemed must be transferred to the capital redemption reserve account by the company. So these are the conditions for redemption of preference shares. Yeah, there is a question from Ms. Selpa. What <coughs> What sorry. if preference shares are partly paid up? and it's already 20 years from the date of issue that is our uh, uh, maximum time earlier then what the course of action is to be followed panel uh, you can you can cancel the uh, uncalled uh, un, un for uh, thing like assuming on is paid is paid up 
when you cancel balance by so automatically it becomes a five rupees fully paid up and thereafter you can read it okay panel uh well i think uh, you have to probably cancel the shares because you can't make a redemption unless the shares are fully paid up but uh, one point to be noted 20 years have from date of issue is already over yeah so you have to assume that it is a company which is uh, uh, in that case you know the part uh, is already there for redemption no i don't think you can redeem unless the capital is fully paid up no yes but what is the reason for remaining unpaid have we called for and not oh, no, maybe forgot for fixed then then you can forfeit also yeah correct 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 i think the company should have called up the capital fully and if in that case uh, uh, those the preference shares which are fully paid up can be redeemed or else if you have not called up only then you can cancel that part and uh, <clears throat> Uh, I mean, reset the face value from ten to five, say as an example. So it becomes a fully paid up, and then you redeem. Because you can at any point of time you can change the terms and conditions by convening the uh, EGM of the preference shareholders and say now face value is not ten, but five or six or eight or whatever is the paid up amount. Then so will it not? Will it not attract? Cap, will it not attract capital reduction provisions? Uh, Yeah, in a way, it could be yes because other. I was supposed to ask that question only because that. So then, then, then needs to be done through court. I mean, NCLT. Yeah, NCLT. 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 NCLT is the only way. Out. Otherwise, make fully paid, and then only you can do. If you can't, then you have to go to NCLT for reduction, and then. Otherwise, otherwise that's a shortcut, Dipti. What you suggested, balance you pay. And then after a week, take back all the full, full face value. You take it back. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, Chita, go ahead. Yes. So these are some conditions. Then we'll go ahead on on the procedure for uh, redemption of preference shares. So, firstly, to call a board meeting to discuss on the redemption of preference shares by giving notice uh, as per the uh, law, which is seven days prior notice for the board uh, for the board meeting. then converting a board meeting convening a board meeting for passing of uh, following the resolution that is to approve redemption of uh, redeemable preference shares out of profits of the company or out of proceeds of fresh issue of shares then to approve transfer of an amount equal to the nominal amount of shares to the uh, to be redeemed to the capital redemption reserve account if shares are proposed to be redeemed out of the profits of the company then to approve fresh issue of uh, nominal amount of shares in case the company opts for a redemption out of fresh issue of shares and authorizing the directors and uh, uh, cs or other other authorized persons to uh, perform filings with the roc and uh, other authorities then inform preference shareholders about the redemption uh, transfer of amount equal to the nominal amount to capital redemption reserve in case the redemption is made out of the profits Uh, making payment to the preference shareholders uh, of the redeem uh, redemption redemption payment, then filing notice of redemption with the register of company that is form SS seven. We have to file in case the company redeems the preference shares. That has to be filed within thirty days from the date of redemption, and then making relevant entries relevant entries in the register of members of the company about the redemption of preference shares. So this is the uh, procedure for redemption of preference shares. moving ahead uh, now the question is what if the company uh, is unable to redeem the preference shares fails to redeem the preference shares within the given time so in case the company fails to redeem the preference shares that is uh, from 20 years from the date of issue uh, where uh, so where the company is not in a position to redeem any preference shares or to pay dividend if any on such shares then such shares will be uh, will be referred as unredeemed preference shares and a company with the consent of the holders of 3/4 in value of such preference shares and with the approval of uh, national company law tribunal nclt on a petition made by it, uh, made by the company in this behalf issue for the redeemable preference shares equal to the amount due including dividend thereon which is unpaid uh, and in respect of the unredeemed preference shares and on the issue of such further redeemable preference shares the unredeemed preference shares shall be deemed to have been uh, redeemed 
then uh, if some of the reference shareholders do not agree to uh, to issue of the further redeemable preference shares then the nclt has the power to order the redemption of forthwith uh, preference shares held by such preference persons who are not consented to the issue of further redeemable preference shares so the company has to make a petition to the nclt uh, with the approval of 3/4th in value of preference shareholders for issue of further redeemable preference shares in case it is not in a position to redeem the preference shares uh then rights available to preference shareholders in case the uh, company fails to uh, redemption uh, of re fails to redeem the preference shares so uh, when they uh, consider that the act of non redemption by the company is seems to be an intentional exploitative act then the preference shareholders can file a class action suit under section 245 uh uh for operation and mismanagement so uh, in this case or uh, the preference only one tenth uh, for that for, for filing a petition under section 245 uh, there has to be approval by the one tenth of preference shareholders and in their capacity as a uh, shareholder as a single shareholder the preference shareholders may seek an order for winding up of the company on just and equitable grounds uh, and if the terms of uh, issue issue of redeemable preference shares so permit the preference shareholders may also uh seek for conversion of preference shares into equity shares of the company in case the company fails to redeem the preference share but this is purely depends on the terms uh, which is agreed upon uh, while issuing the redeemable preference shares so these are the rights available to the preference share holders uh, while if the in case the company is fail to uh, redeem the preference shares uh, any of the panelists would like to throw some highlight on this or sorry on what you say Uh, any of our panelists would like to throw some highlight on this uh, that rights available to preference shareholders in case the company is uh, not able to redeem the preference shares within the given time yeah i think in my view on redemption it will become a debt so there will be like a creditors can they not go to nclt for under ibc rule yeah that is the only option what they can do they can go to the nclt only with the They would like to go to NCLT only, but only thing is, option is they would like to go as a winding up, or they would like to go on the class option. Ah, that they have to decide. That they, they have not to decide. That is the option available to them. Yeah, but uh, as a recourse, you can say only NCLT. You go to judiciary, what else? Yeah, yeah, that is it. That is the only way out. Only thing so, is the what the methodology they want to adopt depends upon them. Yeah. like the company has given powers under section 553 that they can go to nclt and make a petition for issue of further redeemable preference shares on the same ground can preference shareholders go and make a petition to the nclt for redemption of these preference shares under that uh, provisions because the act has not specifically mentioned that preference shareholders can do so in so case of non redemption then it cannot be because nclt should get, get the power from the act only to give the relief so okay. when that relief is not available to preference shareholder nclt will not able to give now here my question to the panelist is uh, as the act allows you preferences for 20 years now from the date of allotment 20 years have uh, been over and i am not reading can as a investor i i may still be called a preference shareholders or then i become a a uh, holder of the preference shares dues so i become a creditor that's my question because this has further implications from the point of view of the company have i to show this amount as a preference capital or i have to show dues to the preference shareholders so presentation in financial statement will be different and i am unable to find the answer no no no, no. in fact after 20 years you cannot show redeemable preference shares because the redemption period is already lost correct so i have to so, so you have to actually show it, it is outstanding loan it is converted as outstanding loan in the financial statements however company will be actually come into the problem because they are done the violation of not redeeming the preference within the period of 20 years action will be taken against the company separately but financial no. statement it will come as a loan it cannot be no longer it can be no, a, like a dues i mean yeah, amount yeah. has already fallen due and remains unpaid whatever yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, correct 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 yeah exactly bala now my question is the moment it is shown this way so that was my next conclusion that we have to go to nclt as a creditor that no, 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 no that slide no. is coming wait no okay. that slide is coming wait wait that's why i have not answered that question yeah.
Okay. Uh, so, Chita, I think we have discussed this. We can go to next write off. Yeah. That uh, we discuss your question. We can take it next. Yes. Hmm. So moving ahead, so this sentence is for a company to not redeem and the rights which is not available uh, on the company if it fails to redeem the preference shares. So there is a prohibition on undertaking buyback of securities for three years after such default exists. Then a uh, fresh issue of preference shares cannot be made unless the ones the redemption of which is due are redeemed. So if uh, whenever there is the company fails to redeem preference shares unless and until uh, that default is made good and the redemption is uh, done. The company cannot uh, come up with the fresh issue of further redeemable preference shares. Uh, in case of listed redeemable preference shares, the disclosure of default shall be required to be made to the stock exchange that the company has defaulted in the uh, redemption of preference shares. So these are some rights. Uh, there are some things that the company cannot do if they fail to redeem the preference shares. So here are benefits for conversion into uh, equity shares like whenever the shares are converted what uh, what benefits the shareholders will have so conversion premium if the con if the if the conversion is done or uh, at a at a premium then so that is beneficial to the shareholders that their value uh, gets increased voting rights uh, they get voting rights uh, upon conversion into equity shares they get voting rights uh, on all the matters where that that is they can participate in the decision making of the company uh, they get ownership in the company. Equity shareholders are considered as the real owners of the company, and hence, uh, whenever the preference shares are converted into equity shares, they the, they get ownership in the company. So these are the benefits upon conversion of preference shares into equity shares. Uh, bonus issue of preference shares. So this was the question which came to our mind uh, while pay, uh, while making this presentation. Uh, whether company can come up with bonus issue of preference shares. So practically, we have not seen many companies coming into uh, coming with a bonus shares bonus issue of preference shares. However, uh, as per the provisions uh, that is section sixty three, uh, it says company may issue bonus shares to its members. So and the definition of members as per section two subsection fifty five, uh, it it includes uh, subscribers to the memorandum who agreed to become member and and the, their name is entered in the register of members. Then every person who agrees in writing to become a member and, and their name is entered in the register of members. Further, every person holding shares of the company and whose name is entered as a beneficial owner in the records of depository. So here, uh, preference shareholders will also come in the definition of members of the company. And hence, a company can uh, issue bonus shares to the preference shareholders. Uh, so I just wanted to ask the panelists why many companies are not coming in coming with a bonus issue of preference shareholders because practically we have not seen it uh, that uh, the companies are coming up with the bonus issue of preference shares. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, the obvious reason is that because preference capital is uh, period capital. So why do you want to add an element of bonus? That again will have a uh, that also has to have a certain period of redemption. You can't issue uh, bonus shares which are uh, bonus preference shares which are irredeemable. Right, right. So therefore, and the only instance I have seen in corporate India of a bonus being made other than in equity is Hindustan Lever made an, a bonus issue of debentures. Yeah, that's a, that's a class, classy case which happened one time back. Yeah. So the basic reason is that why do you, if you issue bonus share preference shares, those will also have to have a carrier life. So there's little point in doing that. And exactly. in any case, logically, you see the shareholder fund is only for the equity shareholders. How can I preference a preference shareholder participate in the uh, you know the uh, shareholder funds? Uh, exactly because uh, bonus share is the capitalization of profits so i uh, so maybe that is the case profit, yes. yeah, yeah so maybe that is the reason that the company is not coming with the bonus yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in, uh, i have never come across any bonus share issue to uh, i think answer, uh, bonus answer, share is always I, only to equity share interest. mana sir i think hindustan lever had issued a bonus debentures yeah, yeah. Venture, venture. Bonus venture. Yeah. Now I'll tell you the purpose. See, because they must be having a surplus cash with them, and maybe they don't want to distribute cash immediately. So there was a debentures and with a staggered uh, redemption of it. So 
maybe uh, in three equal installment after one year or something to take care of their uh, cash flow. So that was a purpose. So maybe by way of issuing bonus shares uh, in the name of debentures is there is no dilution of further equity or there is no further increase of the float in the list uh, on the stock exchange. Probably that also could be one of the reason. And at the same time, they have distributed. But simple option is then you give straight away by way of a dividend. Could be a special dividend. No, no, interest or leave case or something different. It has <laughs> uh, you know, early 2000, I think between 98 and 2000 or something like that. In fact, those days, uh, people used to go to uh, the old act under section 391 to 394 for compromise and arrangement, etc., to distribute their surplus cash. That used to be the case. They want to return the money to the shareholders. They used to do that. But in this case, some other, I think they consulted the Grafford Bellet and they have done in this route and they have distributed the surplus cash via more as debentures and debentures. That, that is what they have done at that time. Yeah. And that being time. a debenture, it was also carrying some interest. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe to the holding company uh, being in a, another country under DTA, etc., some additional benefit also must have been there. We yeah. as a normal shareholders had no difference, but maybe to the... Yeah, yeah, it was, it was actually... Habit, that it was actually it's a distribution. The consideration which is not it in was, the public domain. It was actually a distribution of uh, excess money which, which they had, they had distributed that way by using that. Yeah. True. Okay, Suchita, carry on. Uh, so this was about bonus issue, then rights issue of preference shares. So rights issue is an invitation to the existing shareholders to purchase additional shares in the company in proportion to their existing shareholding by issue of offer letter by the company. So accordingly, companies can come up with issue of rights shares to the existing preference shareholders in proportion to their existing shareholding. So the procedure for rights issue, which I'm going to explain in brief, uh, convening the board meeting, the company has to convene a board meeting to take approval from the board of directors for rights issue of uh, shares. Then issue of offer letters to the shareholders. So offer letters has to be issued uh, prior to three days before the opening of the offer. The time period for offer letter, the offer has to be kept open for minimum 15 days, which has which was which is reduced by the amendment act to seven days and maximum 30 days uh, for shareholders to accept the uh, offer. Then receiving of share application money from the shareholders. Uh, after the application money is received, the company has to convene another, another board meeting uh, to approve the allotment of shares to uh, the existing shareholders. Then filing of forms with ROC, that is form pass 3, return of allotment, which, have, which we have to file within 30 days of allotment uh, to the register of companies. Then issue of share certificates, uh, the company has to issue share certificates to the existing shareholders uh, to whom who have accepted the offer and to whom the allotment is made and the payment of stamp duty on uh, such shares. So this is the procedure for rights issue. So there is a question is, is it possible to issue preference shares to the existing equity shareholders on right basis as the preference shares are issued for the first time panel? So issue of preference uh, preferences as a right on the right basis to existing equity shareholders, whether allowed. What I meant was the section okay. section 62 gives a right. 262 gives to the equity share in further shares, in further shares of the same class. So you cannot obviously issue, uh, give a preemptive right to the equity shareholders to buy pre preference shares. If it is a rights preference, then the only the preference shareholder has the right. So it is not possible. It is not possible. It is in the same class. That is the thing. Because you cannot offer the different class of people. Got it. So it is not possible. Okay. Yeah, but it could be like a, like earlier when issue used to come of even a group company, they would reserve certain shares for the shareholders of the group company. That, that, can, that can share. happen, yeah, but not a right. Not a right, yeah. No, that is a different matter. But yeah, here I agree. As, a, I agree. As, I agree. As, a, as a class of share, it cannot be done. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, Sajinda, carry on. Yeah. Okay, so moving ahead. 
accounting treatment as per Indian S thirty two, that is, preference shareholders are to be considered as a part of capital or debt. So there are two uh, categories over here, which has which has been explained. So if an entity issues preference shares that pay a fixed rate of dividend and uh, with along with the mandatory uh, redemption option at a future date. then that should be recognized as a subordinate debt uh, in case of accounting treatment and preference shares that do not have fixed maturity and where the issuer does not have contractual obligation to make any payment are recognized as equity that is part of capital so accordingly it is uh, it is it is being treated in the uh, accounting that is financial statements so This is an accounting treatment for uh, preference shareholders, whether it is to be uh, considered as capital or debt in case of presentation in the financial statements. Uh, then here is a case study uh, that is between Bank of Baroda and Aban Offshore Limited. Uh, so, Chita, there was a point on NCLT, the right to refer to NCLT, na? No? Ha, we have taken that. That, we yeah, yeah, that, that we have. That. So yes. that question is answered, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And one uh, one question is there interesting from Mr. Jaswin, uh, officer. Can a private limited company issue preference shares, which will be listed on stock exchange without converting itself into public? My view, it is possible. In my view, it is possible. Uh, only thing is that you see, you you make a, it's very similar to uh, a private placement of debt securities. and uh, what has happened is uh, if there is any secondary market activity by which the number of uh, preference shareholders exceed 200 that is all right but if there is a primary issue which is made uh, uh, and which is listed in the stock exchange the offer should be limited to 200 members i mean if you consider the uh, uh, and then of course if there is trading in the process the number increases beyond 200 like in the case of a a uh, private placement of debt there is no problem so it is possible it is possible but uh, you know i think it's, uh, it's it, it is to be avoided because in many cases the ratio of companies has raised objections particularly i remember in the case of issue of uh, debt securities on private placement where the number of because of the secondary market operation the debt holders number exceed the maximum then the registrar has issued notices which you have to explain that this was your original issue was not intended for more than 200 or 50 in the old law but still it will be taken adversely right no it will be but then you will explain if you explain correctly that it is not you see after all you listed the preference shares to ensure that there is a liquidity there is a marketability on the script so therefore if you uh, sort of allow uh, the preference shares to be listed and it, it is possible now because 252 clearly says you can list preference but you will not be considered as a listed company, listed company. it's possible but only thing is as you rightly say the regulator will view differently you will be ending up you know spending the Time and litigation, etc., will come up again. You know that things can get complicated if preference shares uh, remains, uh, I mean, dividend remains unpaid, and they get a right to vote on all. Then we are violating the terms of uh, article where the transfer of share, because it acquires enough color of equity, and there is no restriction on the transfer, because it will be freely transferable and it will be in a demand mode. I don't know how do we address that issue also. Or it could be treated as in the dim public kind of thing. So that's the risk we are carrying. No, Point two, be right? Because there are many things which are unanswered in this uh, new act. Although the act has been very stringent in some aspects, that is there. That is not in the initially. Jiti said, although we think it is a preference share, it is not that easy. There are a lot of things which we need to still understand. So many questions are you know we are. Arguing like anything, it's really ticklish. Yeah, yeah, you said it correctly at the beginning. Yeah, so reality is unless that fits into and you continue to remain private limited, it should be done. Otherwise, you will become a public company. Yeah, yeah, that's the risk. That is, you are always carrying because the regulator how they it's will risk take. It's risky. Can't be. Huh? Yeah, that is there. Yeah. Okay, there is a question uh, from. Miss Silpa, as per Regulation sixty two one, where at any time company having share capital proposed to increase its subscribed capital 
by issue of other says such shares shall be offered to persons who at the date of the offer are holders of equity shares of the company in proportion as nearly as circumstances admit to the paid up share capital on this those shares it implies no. if company I, I wants disagree to <laughs> I let me complete. If company wants to increase its subscribe capital by issue of no, I disagree with the, this uh, conclusion. I'll explain to you <laughs> that you know the, the the law when you use an expression, when you use an adverb such, then you are into a specific species of capital. The section says uh, that. It is, you know, at any time, where at any time a company having a shared capital proposes to subscribe capital by the issue of further shares, such the, uh, the very word such is actually qualifying equity. So you have to issue further equity shares to holders of equity shares. You cannot offer preference shares to the holders of equity shares. There is a Supreme Court decision on uh, uh, the connotation of the word such. I am I'm happy to share it. Uh, 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 and uh, the, I, I have that decision in my book, but I, I can't take it out. But such implies that you are referring to, uh, you are restricting the applicability to so the a particular category. So yeah. such refers here, the, since the preemptive right is to the existing equity shareholders, the shares to be offered have to be necessarily equity. Right. Okay. Suchita, yeah, please. Last part of presentation. Yeah. So case study. This is a case study between uh, case between Bank of Baroda and Aban Offshore Limited. So the brief facts are the appellant that is Bank of America, America being a preference share holder, have filed an application to NCLT for redemption of preference shares under Section 553 uh, or Section 245. NCLT Chennai bench has dismissed the application uh, of the appellant solely on the ground that the appellant being preference shareholder has no local standing to file application for redemption of shares under section 553 of Companies Act 2013 or even under section 245 of Companies Act 2013. Uh, agreed by the order of NCLT, the appellant have filed an appeal to NCLAT. Uh, so the legal question involved here is whether there is any remedy under law available to preference shareholder for filing application for redemption of preference shares. So this we have already discussed uh, also in the earlier slide. So NC, uh, so decisions of NCLAT, NCLAT are, are like preference shareholders are not remedyless for redemption of preference shares. They can file an application under section 553 of Companies Act 2013 or alternatively may fi also file an application under section 245, 245 of the Companies Act as a class suit action. So the reason behind uh, this is that the intention of legislature while uh, promulgating section 55 was to compulsorily provide for redemption of preference shares by doing away with the issue of irredeemable preference shares. Uh, so the act do not permit the issue of irredeemable preference shares. Therefore, even though there is no specific provision stipulated under Companies Act 2013, through which relief can be sought by preference shareholders in case of non-redemption, because if section 55.3 uh, only gives an uh, authority to the company to file an application to NCLT for uh, issue of further redeemable preference shares. However, uh, the intention of legislature is being clear and absolute that the uh, company cannot issue irredeemable preference shares. So in case of non-redemption, uh, the tribunal's inherent power can be invoked to get an appropriate relief by an aggrieved, uh, aggrieved preference share holder. So alternatively, that is preference shareholders uh, coming with the coming in the definition of members as per section two subsection fifty five, they can file a petition under section two forty five of the SAID uh, Act as a class action uh, against the uh, that is in case of operation and mismanagement uh, by the conduct of affairs of the company. Uh, hence, the NCLT's, uh, NCLT's order has been set aside by the NCLT and the matter is remitted back to NCLT Chennai base to decide as per the law. So this is, this, this is, this is case of uh, January 2020 and the uh, further part is uh, yet not uh, resolved. So, but basically NCLT has said that uh, the preference shareholders can also uh, file a petition under section 245 in case the company fails to redeem the preference shares. Uh, then fine and penalty in case of non-compliance. 
so basically section 55 of companies act 2013 do not provide any penalty clause for non compliance and hence general penalty as per section 2450 of the act shall be applicable uh then additional fees for non non filing of form ss7 uh, that is for redemption of uh, preference shares then if the delay is up to 6 months then 2.5% of the amount involved for the period of delay and if the delay is beyond 6 months then 3% for the uh, for the amount involved uh, for the delay beyond 6 months so this is the penalty for uh, late filing of form ss7 uh, and in case of non any non compliance of any of the provisions of section 55 the general penalty as per section 450 of the act shall be applicable since no specific penalty is provided under section 55 uh coming into conclusion uh, so we could say that preference shares are a perfect instrument for the company which is looking for an investment without dilution in control and voting rights over the company because as we discussed in the presentation that preference shareholders do not have any voting rights and management decision making power in the company so this is beneficial for the company that they can come up with preference share issue without having any dilution in the control uh, of affairs of the company and at the same time it uh, it is beneficial to the preference shareholders because it offers a fixed income that is fixed rate of dividend dividend and priority in payment of dividend and repayment of capital in case of winding up of the company so uh, in all it, it is beneficial in, on the part of company also and on the part of preference shareholders also suchita so, uh, yes, i think there was a slight uh, point where you know mr nikhil raised that no hmm. if it is not uh, after fixed period it should be shown as a debt or preference shares you have written something some that it cannot be creditors or something no there was a point they cannot be creditors and in insolvency suit all that you have taken uh, uh, i actually i i did covered it earlier under this disincentives but uh, but uh... for this on this slide we are we have covered that earlier that it should not be considered as a creditor in case the company fails to uh, redeem the preferences so you are not written that right no i we will remove it later on after discussion no but uh, from where so whether they can file insolvency case under ibc or what your point was there mm, uh, actually so they are, since you no. told me i stopped mr nikhil that no we have covered in the slide okay so in case that it is not redeemed it will be shown as a creditor or preferences and if it is a financial debt whether then uh, it should not be considered as a debt ma'am if the if the preference uh, company fails to redeem preferences then they cannot be considered as a debt of the company so where it is written uh not specifically written in the act so elsewhere but on upon research we have come into this conclusion Mm. So Nikhil, that uh, portion is uh, left because I discussed the presentation. Then that was there. Then it was mentioned that uh, it cannot be. So I, even that time I asked a question where it is written because it's a big impact. If it is not shown as a creditors, then the right of uh, recovery get different. <coughs> oh, but as uh, Mr. Bala also has uh, said at that time, and even I agree with him. that once uh, the security ceases to exist in the balance sheet means in the financial statement of the company it will be shown as dues of the preference shareholder and it will cease to be the preference capital on the redemption because you can't transfer suppose uh, let's say 31st january was the last date can you sell your preference shares or transfer to anybody you can't because it ceases to be the security so then company cannot show that as a because this i am taking this analogy from the debts or i mean debentures or the bonds once it has matured it stops being tradable or transferable so thereafter it will be shown as dues of the debentures holder or the dues of the bond holders and on the similar analogy even this will be dues to the preference shareholder so in the balance sheet it will come as a liability yeah yeah it is a part of capital i fully agree with wala Oh, yeah. and because and, of but whether for uh, nclt purpose it can be considered a debt or no i am not aware of so uh, my question was from that point can he go to nclt if company is not paying and take it to the liquidation that was and the ibc 
then they can. If it you show that that, then it should be. I don't know whether any even I have to check any existing case. Up till now, I have not heard. But well, here the issue is how the company shows is indifferent. Let's say I have given some money to you. You maybe show differently in your balance sheet. I agree. I agree. Show differently. So that cannot be the guiding uh, factor. Guiding principle. I guess it should be separately whether it is a financial uh, creditor or. Yeah. Uh, Correct, Nikhil. What is whatever the presentation made is something different, but if I think he can definitely go. Yeah, yeah. Money is due. It is not paid no, by the sir, company. The company will not show which is and uh, yeah. affect adversely. That is yeah. understandable. Because this also will draw analogy from let's say once the company has declared dividend and for X Y Z reason not paying, it will be shareholder to the extent of uh, dividend receivable. He is a debtor. And from the company point of view, uh, shareholder will be a creditor. Dividend when it is declared but not paid. Okay. Let's see. We'll wait yeah. for that kind of case where the preference shares are not ready and they will file case for the insolvency. I think for us it's a time to close because it's already 125. I think. Yeah, yeah. Now we are closing. So, yes, Suchitra, then. you have made a wonderful presentation. I must really appreciate for your homework which you have done and I also acknowledge receipt in spite of your sickness you made a very good presentation and other things and all without taking any help etc which is very much uh, appreciable and as Dipti puts it in the very beginning this topic has become very interesting topic normally we try to close around 12 45 one o'clock today it has gone well beyond that that itself shows what is the importance of this particular topic but still a lot of weapons buds are there we hope some clarification or some new judicial decision will come on that. That's what we can expect. It. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Ichira, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for a very thank good you for, uh, It's been a pleasure for me to be a, a panelist. Uh, and I think all of us have learned a lot. Uh, you know, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice initiative and I hope it continues. There is a question is there, can we get a presentation PPT for all the participants? The presentation is actually shared to your registered email address and uh, thing, and even the presentation recorded one will be available on the YouTube. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kalidas Ji, for your time. Thank it you. was really interesting. And what My I pleasure. wanted, you made it that way topic, that interesting, complex issue to be discussed, which is not yet clear. There are so many things yet to be clarified in the law. You have taken yeah, yeah, yeah. it exactly in that way only. And that's why only I wanted this topic. Thanks a lot, Bala, sir, and all the participants for your participation. Nikhil, a lot of contribution from your part. I appreciate. Thanks, everyone. As usual, please. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks to Kalidas. It's a good learning session, actually, to be very frank with you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. And next uh, Saturday, we have topic on uh, uh, by uh, uh, another interesting topic. So please be attentive. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye.